And finally, we'll uh, hear from Colin Christopher, Deputy Director of Government Affairs for Darul Hijra Islamic Center of Northern Virginia. <clears throat> Colin Christopher, C O L I N, last name Christopher, C H R I S T O P H E R. On behalf of Darul Hijra Islamic Center, um, I'd like to offer a few reflections on the state of where we are today. As a Muslim, a husband, an uncle, uh, a brother, an American, I'm, I'm really saddened uh, by what I'm seeing and hearing from some of our top elected officials and a few of those who aspire to become the next president of the United States. The hateful and uninformed rhetoric that Mr. Trump has said about Muslims and other majority immigrant groups and other groups that have been named and the cowardice avoidance <coughs> to condemn such ideas. Florida's current governor, Rick Scott's <coughs> repeated sidestepping of direct questioning on MSNBC's Morning Joe comes to mind. These public statements are lack thereof and are disgraceful and dangerous. The fear-based violent atmosphere that has been heightened, it was there before, but it's been heightened, through this type of rhetoric by Mr. Trump and others is not the kind of America that I was raised with in Wisconsin not the kind of America that many of us were raised with wherever we were raised, whether in this country or other places. And these are far from the kinds of solutions that Americans desire and need. L let's, uh, let me offer a, a brief snapshot of the challenges we face right now. We have growing wealth inequality at a level unseen since the 1930s. The pie is bigger than ever, but middle class and working families are getting a thinner and thinner slice. Nearly one in four children live in poverty. Nearly the same number live just above the poverty line. People are unstable, they're scared, they're angry, and justifiably so. Of the th wealthiest 30 countries in the world, it is the least likely that someone living in this country is able to climb out of being born into a family in the bottom fifth, uh, above that, and out of poverty. The American dream is exactly that. It's a dream for most, it's not a reality. So we have real problems to address. And in response to those challenges, people seeking the highest office in the land are scapegoating Muslims and other immigrant groups for the most pressing issues facing working families in America. They're inventing things about <coughs> Muslims and our faith and other minority groups who have been living on this very land for hundreds of years longer than many European groups who first traveled to America in the 19th century. Which brings me to my next point. Our country is a, is, is a land of immigrants. The Constitution of the U.S. <coughs> recognizes the value of diverse ideas and commerce, and that is what has made the U.S. so strong and influential. Let us not forget that nearly every person living in this country, their ancestors came from somewhere, whether by choice or whether by force, whether they were blacks during the transatlantic slave trade, whether they were Jews during World War II, or whether they're from Latin America, <coughs> Africa, and Asia escaping violence and war today. And, and once someone arrives, they're expected to participate in the public square and contribute in tangible ways, not just talk. And that is exactly what Muslims in this country have done and continue to do. The Muslim vote has been decisive. The Muslim American vote was significant in Congressman Jerry Connolly's recent election victory here in Northern Virginia. And just this past Tuesday, the Arab and Muslim communities in Michigan were decisive in deciding the, the Democratic primary results. These are facts. We're calling upon all political leaders and those seeking the highest public office to honor the First Amendment by exercising their freedom of speech with the responsibility of civility and respect for all of America's people. 